Hello everyone! In this video we're going to do a brief introduction into kitchen appliances and fixtures. So first we'll be looking at appliances, a little bit about kitchen plumbing, tile and flooring, and then touch on countertops. So first appliances and fixtures. Um, if first thing we really need to think about when we think about designing a kitchen is if we're using freestanding appliances or built-in appliances. So here we see a couple of examples. On the left we see a plan view on the top and then an elevation view on the bottom of a basic kitchen design with freestanding appliances. Specifically, we want to take note that it's a freestanding refrigerator freezer unit here on the right and then a freestanding range. So this is what, you know, I would say most people have, you know, a freestanding refrigerator that could easily be pulled out and replaced. And there would just be kind of an opening here, as well as the range, you know, combined oven, cooktop surface, freestanding, um, you know, again, could be easily pulled out and replaced. And really the idea with freestanding appliances is that they're finished on all sides and they're engineered to stand alone. So they're, they're meant to just kind of sit there <laughs> like that. And um, that's what they're meant to do. Then here um, on the right, we're thinking about designing with built-in appliances. And built-in appliances are designed and engineered to be built into cabinetry or you know some kind of support structure. So they are not meant to just sit there on their own. Uh, the sides are usually raw. Um, they you know kind of show the inner workings in some sense, and they certainly aren't attractive and are not meant to be exposed. So this might be in the case of a built-in refrigerator, for example. So there would be some sort of cabinetry, some sort of millwork frame built around this unit that it could rest inside or possibly a drywall structure as well. Uh, then looking over to the range top and oven, same here. So a range top is really just the top cooking portion of what we see over here with the freestanding range that needs to be built into the cabinetry and rest inside of the countertop surface. And then the oven, uh, there's many sizes of wall ovens, configurations, um, and those are meant to be built into cabinetry again and can be at various heights, um, but cannot just simply, you know, sit on the floor or anything like that. They are meant to be built into, again, cabinetry or possibly some sort of, you know, wall uh, type of scenario. So thinking about appliances, you know, really when we're thinking about a kitchen, we, you know, think absolutely of a refrigerator, most certainly. We're thinking of a uh, range or at least a um, cooktop and an oven, for example. We're thinking about a microwave. We're thinking about dishwashers, most certainly. Uh, there can also be a whole wide variety of, you know, coffee makers that are built into the wall and convection ovens and all kinds of other things. But those are really the basics that, you know, we're thinking about in a typical kitchen scenario. Uh, just briefly thinking about refrigerator styles. Refrigerators actually, you know, they come in all kinds of sizes, proportions, uh, you know, with various purposes and so on. So, you know, really thinking about our most typical refrigerator, probably right there in the middle, you know, freestanding unit, you know, something that you can go to any big box store and purchase um, with, you know, that kind of split style where you have the freezer on top, refrigerator on the bottom, you know, handle off to one side. Uh, you know, another very, very common uh, refrigerator type is the side-by-side, -side. Uh, refrigerator being larger, freezer being smaller, typically. Um, and then this one happens to have a built-in ice maker on the front, uh, you know, that type of a thing. Um, another very typical scenario. We also have a French door model with freezer drawers below here. So this is a refrigerator on top with two smaller doors that open French door style um, to the large kind of refrigerator cavity up there. And then, you know, uh, two, most likely two freezer units below. It's possible one of those is also a refrigeration unit, um, something like that, but most likely um, freezer below. And those are kind of typical, you know, stainless steel type of a look that we, uh, you know, kind of all, can understand, uh, but there are many manufacturers and there are many, many different looks uh, that refrigerators might have. 
from very simple to sort of dramatic and very high statement pieces um, in the kitchen. So, you know, a very kind of old old fashioned type of looking, you know, um, unit here from Big Chill with refrigerator on top, freezer on the bottom in this case. Um, and they come in all, you know, wide variety of colors. Um, another from AGA up here, um, another kind of single door freezer on the bottom, you know, again, all these different looks. Um, they can even be highly decorative. Uh, really the sky's the limit with appliances. And this unit from Viking here, as many manufacturers will have, is just a single unit. This is an entire um, refrigerator unit that would actually be built in. And then you could get a matching um, freezer unit as well. So they can come separately and you can get them in different shapes and sizes. And we can also have other scenarios like under counter units as well, where maybe it's a small refrigerator. Um, you know, often thinking of these being in kitchenettes, hotels, things like that. And these could also maybe even just hold beverages, wine, that type of a thing. Thinking just a little bit about ranges, again, these come in so many you know, styles and colors. And we think of those typical ones we saw before, um, but these can come, you know, be, be statement pieces as well. Let's put it that way. So really, if you want to make a statement with an appliance, you can, if it's in the budget. Thinking locally, for those of us in Wisconsin, we like to think about Sub-Zero Wolf Cove. So Sub-Zero, made in Wisconsin and is internationally known, they make fantastic products, and they make very high-end refrigeration units of all different shapes and sizes. Um, so here we're seeing a Pro 48-inch unit that has a glass door, refrigeration doors, freezer as well. Uh, we're seeing built-in units that actually have um, wood fronts put on to match the cabinetry and are set flush inside the millwork, inside the cabinetry to really become part of the space and, you know, disappear a little bit instead of, you know, being such a large element in the room as a refrigerator can be, you know, as seen down here with this unit. Um, we can have large configurations like we see here on the lower right um, is also part of the same kind of line as we're seeing here on the left where we have these integrated built-in units that can either be stainless steel or put the matching cabinetry on the front and these are actually paired um, so that you know we have like left and right um, handle configurations and so you can get an extreme amount of refrigeration into one kitchen if you'd like it. Sub-Zero um, has Sub-Zero, Wolf, and Cove. So Wolf would be the line that handles all of the cooking. So this includes gas, electric, dual fuel, and induction ranges to start. So a range being the combination of the cooktop and the oven, so that full unit. Okay, and when we're talking about gas, electric, dual fuel, it's really the, the method for cooking. So it can be all gas, all electric, that means, you know, the burners and the oven. Dual fuel, so it's partially electric, partially gas, or induction, you know, uh, which would be the cooking surface um, specifically. So um, many different options on how they're powered, how they look, you know, each, each unit has a different appearance, and then the sizes ranging from a 30 inch range, 36 inches wide, 48 inches wide, all the way up to 60 inches wide. So they can get very, very large. Thinking about wall ovens, so if we have separate ovens, um, these can also have um, many different looks and configurations and sizes. And very simply, thinking about a wall oven, you can have a single wall oven. They're 30 inches. Um, you can have multiples of these in multiple configurations, however you want to install them. And there's the single, and then there's also a double. These happen to be showing the contemporary units, but these could be in the professional look as well with the big pro handles, um, depending on the style of your kitchen. We can also have separate cooktops. So if you have a separate wall oven, you probably have a separate cooktop as well. And these can be gas, electric, and induction. So all gas, a combination of gas and electric, or simply induction. And 
the um, the style you choose first and like the the method of cooking will really determine you know the look. So if we get into a gas range or a dual fuel type of scenario, um, you can really get into um, some kind of professional looking, you know, that kind of a look. Um, and then if you go more of like a electric um, or induction type of a look, like we're seeing here, both in um, this plan view or, you know, in this kind of angled, almost isometric looking view, it's very smooth, it's very sleek, it has a much more contemporary appearance. Now that doesn't mean you can't use a glass topped cooktop in a traditional kitchen, you most certainly can. Um, it's just that we tend to kind of think of, you know, these kind of gas cooktops as being a little bit more of that professional looking kind of a vibe. And these as a little bit more of a, a sleek contemporary look, but they certainly can work in many, many styles of kitchens. And, and with our, you know, cooktops and our um, ranges, uh, we certainly have to have ventilation. And there is just, a wide world out there of different ventilation options. Uh, but we really think of uh, most of our ventilation happens with hoods, whether it's a wall hood that's attached to the wall or an island hood that's you know, hovering over an island. But this is to draw all you know the smoke and steam and all of those things from the cooking process you know, out of the space. And so those are probably the most typical. Um, you can also have downdraft types of ventilation. And these actually raise and lower with the push of a button, um, are typically installed in islands, although they can be installed in, in wall scenarios as well, if you'd like. Um, and so they're more sleek, they're more minimal, um, and they don't they don't make quite that statement in a space, um, but you know they kind of disappear when you're not using them. Um, they certainly aren't as strong in their ventilation as you know, kind of a wall-mounted type of large uh, piece of ventilation, but it's an option. Um, thinking about um, microwaves, uh, you know, a nice, really kind of interesting trend is the idea of a drawer microwave, as you see. So it's not the door that opens up on the front, but it's an actual drawer that slides out. Um, Sharp happened to, happens to have the patent on the drawer microwaves. And so if you're thinking about installing a microwave that's not up high, you know, that's not maybe above the range or, you know, somewhere kind of higher up in the cabinetry, but you'd like to build it in lower, perhaps in like an island um, scenario like this, um, the drawer is really nice because it opens and you can actually just reach in and grab the item. You don't have to approach it from the front. So it just depends on your installation scenario. You certainly wouldn't want to install one of these up high or that drawer would come out and hit you right in the face. So just kind of an overview here of some kind of installations of Sub-Zero Wolf um, products. You know, again, building in those refrigeration units. So you'll see here, it's a very, very sleek millwork installation um, that really makes it look super polished. We're seeing the um, wall ovens here built into the wall with a tile surround. Uh, another solution over here with a large scale mosaic pattern built into the countertop, wall, um, hood here, refrigerator built into the cabinetry with the wood panels on the front, oven built into the wall, and then down here we're actually seeing under cabinet um, refrigeration, I believe it's a line unit, uh, and then down here a very professional looking um, you know, kitchen with a large um, Pro 48 refrigerator, large um, dual fuel range. And then you can barely see it here, but another way to deal with ventilation is actually using a liner and then building a shroud around the ventilation that looks however you want. It could be metal, it could be wood, and it can really become a high statement piece in your kitchen. Um, and so that sort of obscures the um, ventilation piece underneath of it. Another example of some Sub-Zero Wolf um, appliances built into a kitchen situation. And then looking at Cove. So Cove is the newest line with Sub-Zero Wolf. And Cove is all about 
dishwashers. So that is the dishwasher line for Sub-Zero and Wolf. So you can kind of get the whole package through the one company. And so here really just kind of thinking about, again, with the style of your kitchen, you know, here we're seeing these integrated units built in, but still stainless steel fronts. So we can see them there, you know, still kind of have that identity of being that refrigerator. Um, and then looking down here, we can either have a stainless steel front on our dishwasher or put a panel on the front that actually matches the cabinetry. Thinking about dishwashers, um, there are other options, of course, as there are other options with refrigeration and um, cooking and all that. There are many, many, many options out there. Just kind of pointing out um, Fisher, Pickel, and Bosch are also great options as well as others. Um, and thinking about dishwashers as well, we of course have the kind of typical drop down door like we were just looking at like we're used to thinking but there are also dishwasher drawer scenarios that can be easier for people to use easier to load and unload so there are a lot of options out there so kind of looking at that whole family line you know just kind of keeping Sub-Zero Wolf Cove in mind as this is what you'll be using in your project um, it's really the full range and you can go on their website and put, put your you know kitchen together, whether it's the range, um, separate refrigeration and freezer units, refrigeration doors, warming drawers to keep either food or dishes or whatever might be warm, microwave ovens, um, they really have a full line at your disposal. Another image of an installation um, of Sub-Zero Wolf products. And I think this one does a nice job of showing this beautifully framed um, cooking area with our um, landing counters on each side of this large range. And then here we can see a nice example of using a pro liner piece of ventilation and then building a custom shroud around the front that fills that entire space. So it becomes a very, very large statement piece um, in this kitchen. So thinking a little bit then about kitchen plumbing. So kitchen plumbing. So first we're thinking faucets. There are so many options with so many finishes. I mean, it really seems like just an endless amount of things you could be looking at. Uh, when in doubt, when you're unsure, you're not quite sure where to go, go with Kohler, another fantastic Wisconsin company um, made right near Sheboygan in Kohler, Wisconsin. They make fantastic products. Um, and they're very, very high end, very nice. So Kohler makes a wonderful array of kitchen faucets. And here's just a couple of examples of kitchen faucets, but they come in just a vast configuration of sizes, and finishes and shapes and forms. And really when you think about, you know, getting into faucets and things, they really are such a statement in your kitchen. It's sort of like that jewelry piece, you know? Another great option is Waterworks. Um, Waterworks is a fantastic company that makes beautiful high-end faucets. Again, there are many, many more, but that's a great starting point. Thinking about sinks, back to Kohler and Waterworks, they also make fantastic sinks. And sinks, again, they have so many different looks, whether they're stainless steel um, or ceramic coated or metal, um, whatever they might be, they have a big effect on how a kitchen design turns out. Whether they're mounted flush under a countertop and they're very contemporary and sleek, um, whether they're surface mounted and have a little bit more of that kind of prominent look, um, or whether they have that apron front and you really actually Actually start to in a way kind of bring that sink into the room where we kind of classic you know that kind of classic farmhouse look almost this one happens to be made entirely out of copper okay so just thinking about you know what these might look like in a space so here we have a flush mounted sink in the back where the countertop comes right up to the edge and really has a clean look and then we have a little bar sink here that has a raised lip over the edge so two different looks in the same space. Uh, here we have a apron front sink that's flush. It's under mounted. Um, so the countertop is coming over, but then we see the front of that sink. Um, here we have a under mounted square stainless steel sink with not one, but two contemporary articulated faucets that can be sort of moved and contorted um, 
as needed. And then we think a little bit about hardware. So, you know, the hardware in a space, a hard, the hardware that you put on cabinetry, again, there's just endless options. And it, this truly, truly is like the finishing touch, that jewelry piece on the room. Uh, and they can be made, you know, out of glass, metal, you know, wood. I've seen leather. There's just, you know, again, just so many opportunities here to make a statement with the hardware, whether it's recessed, whether it's very large and prominent or anything in between. Some interesting and really wonderful um, companies to look at include Rocky Mountain Hardware. Uh, they make beautiful pieces. Um, Schwab and Company, Restoration Hardware, um, Top Knobs can be a great resource. Uh, Hefala can also be just a wonderful resource. And of course, these are just, you know, kind of jumping off points, a few, a few options to get you started, because again, there are just so many options. And as we look at some hardware installations, you know, we can see how dramatically those can affect the space. You know, so here on the left, we have some very tiny little knobs that we can see kind of down below and how minimal, but, you know, kind of like punctual the sort of feel right and then over here we have the long sleek um kind of railed options that are sort of integrated with the drawer and drop down and how those can look and how they look different for example in silver than they do in that dark bronzed metal where you want them to sort of disappear a little bit or be prominent and you know really make an impact uh, with your design so then just touching on the idea of kitchen tile and flooring as you're thinking about kitchens and your space well just about anything can kind of go in a kitchen you know um although we certainly don't ideally like to put carpeting in a kitchen of course can you sure <laughs> it can happen but it's absolutely not ideal of course because of cooking and spilling and, uh, and all the things that can happen so just looking at, you know, kind of some eye candy here, some different options, whether it's very sleek, contemporary, smooth tile with tiny grout lines, large hex, small hex in a very detailed pattern with the border that's running around the room. Um, here we actually have brick and mortar in this sort of rustic looking space. Very cool. Uh, we can get into more decorative types of patterns. They certainly don't always have to be so subtle. Um, you know, very strong patterns, kind of getting into that more, um, you know, kind of whimsical sort of, you know, sort of, it almost looks like found or something like that, which is a stark contrast to these very contemporary lacquered cabinets. Uh, again, with a bold pattern and, you know, kind of a bold color cabinet as well. Um, or something that's in a way more subtle with neutral tones, but certainly adds a lot more kind of vibrance and to the dimension to the space that it might otherwise have. And also note here in this image, you can barely see it, but that tile is set very nicely into that wood floor, you know, offering a nice um, distinction. We can also have um, wood or wood look tile. Um, so, you know, of course, wood can be very beautiful, but a wood look tile can mimic that appearance, um, but be very durable, uh, you know, much more durable really to, you know, like staining and some of the spilling and things that can happen. And then if you have a, for example, wood look tile, you can butt it up to another type of tile and create some really interesting um, installations. Here again, having a little bit more of that rustic type of a look. And then if we're thinking in terms of backsplashes, again, pretty much anything uh, goes here without you know, without the exception of a carpet. <laughs> um, yeah, so we want to think about, you know, things that are durable and, you know, can withstand staining and dirt and grime and all the things that it's going to be subjected to. Um, so, you know, as you're thinking about tile, um, you really want to think about, you know, grout as an either an accent or making it part of the design. So do you want the grout that's in between the tiles to sort of disappear, to stand out? Um, you know, how do you want that to look? And that is true on the floor as well. And really think about the color of the grout. For example, white is extremely prone to staining. Um, so it isn't always, you know, advisable in these areas. Um, if you're using, you know, tile in the backsplash, run the tile to the counter. You don't have to have a sec a separate, like, section of backsplash here if that's, like, the countertop running up. Just do tile all the way down. 
you really want to think about balancing the floor color with the tile color. You know, they should they should get along, right? And if, if the counter has a textured, kind of busy appearance, you'll probably want to keep the tile pretty subtle. And if the tile here is subtle, you can probably be a little more bold with the countertop, but you, you might not want to do both. So it really just depends. Um, so just a few different looks, you know, kind of thinking of these classic white, um, whether it's a hex or glass or subway tile, it can be very neat and clean. Uh, we can get into more, um, you know, unique shapes and sort of patterns and thinking about that grout color again um, and what a dramatic impact that will have in our patterns. And these backsplashes can really absolutely dominate and make a space. It can be very geometric, um, highly colored or neutral, so many options. And then here we have, you know, very beautiful, kind of that hand done, highly patterned, highly colorful look. Um, you know, so these rooms would feel very, very different with a different tile choice, right? So the oppor opportunities for your design in the backsplash tile are, are huge. And then thinking about kitchen counters. So again, my joke, pretty much anything goes with the exception of carpet on the kitchen counters. <laughs> so, um, you know, everything in the kitchen, we're really thinking about stains and spilling and durability. And so we're thinking about counters. Yes, there's a lot of options. Um, a quartz type of material is generally the best choice. It's really, really, really durable and can have many different looks. Um, you can have, you know, tile and other things. Um, we can also have the countertop run up the backsplash. Generally speaking, you know, keep it simple. Um, and thinking about that um, overhang, right? We want it to overhang the lower cabinets around an inch or so, right? So if there's, you know, spilling or anything like that, it's not flush, um, typically. Uh, we want to make sure that the counter you know, can withstand stains and heat and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, keeping in mind, like some of these options that are extremely beautiful and extremely durable are also quite pricey. So if you're doing a kitchen remodel that's on a budget, doing something in a laminate is probably going to be the most cost effective uh, way to go. So just showing some, you know, different examples here. So here we can have actual cement countertops, poured cement countertops that are buffed. They can be absolutely stunning and have a very cool, very unique look. Um, you know, and here's seeing like this contrast with the black cabinetry and that hood shroud. It's really, it's a very, very beautiful look. Um, we can have things that have like marble types of appearances, soapstone, um, that kind of a look, which can be quite striking. Um, and as we're thinking about, you know, quartz and stone and those types of um, materials, you know, we can really think about our installation and doing the waterfall edge where the same material drops straight down to the floor and sort of encapsulates the countertop, often seen on islands, but can be on the edges of, of walls certainly as well, um, can be very, very striking. We can also have wood countertops where we have a butcher block type of look or solid pieces um, and there's a nice kind of softness to a wood countertop that can be very beautiful and very appealing um, and you know wood is actually very durable as well as long as the surface is prepared properly. And we can also have tiled countertops, tile that, you know, is just on the countertop or also runs up the wall. And, you know, just about any kind of configuration you can think of, you know, in appearance, you can also get with tile, whether we have um, surface mounted sinks that kind of undermounted or whatever the look might be. Um, and they're very durable um, and they're really nice. But then you have to think about grout color and the slight unevenness that that surface might create. So it just depends on the look and um, desires of the client in this case. So that's just a little bit about kitchens, appliances, and some of the finishes that we need to think about.